Okay, so we found this stag beetle in our yard uh, a few days ago and we decided it would be awesome to show you guys how to do close-up wide angle with uh, this really, really cool beetle. So if that's something that interests you, you can like and subscribe and you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. So arguably one of the most important aspects of close-up wide angle, at least in my opinion, um, macro photography is composition. Um, it is not something that I'm uh, necessarily exceptional at, but I think that's what really makes the best photos is when you um, oftentimes choose um, the the right setting or the best setting, uh, you know, to tell the story you're wanting to tell. Um, so sometimes you can take advantage of an organism that either won't allow you to move it or it won't move in situ, and and you've got a good situation with the scene um, to do close up wide angle macro photography. I've had experiences with that, for example, with dragonflies. Uh, occasionally um, but most things um, I, I move um, within the area that I'm at to a, a, a scene that is going to be not distracting and tell the story that I'm trying to tell um, with the insect so uh, that's what we're doing today I have a, a giant stag beetle that Kendra found on our place and we walked into the to the woods on our place to see if we can't find a good spot to try to photograph it. <clears throat> this is uh, one of the coolest beetles in North America. It is um, a major male. Uh, we've gotten females quite often here on the property, but this is the first time we've gotten uh, a male. And um, it, how, do you, it, how, how do you feel about sticking your fingers in there? And where in here? I don't have a problem with it at all. <laughs> um, this is a, a great subject for close-up wide-angle macro photography, in my opinion, because one, it's a very sexy bug, very charismatic bug. Two, as you can see right here, it's not moving. And that's a, a um, an important, at least for me, an important aspect to... Uh, being successful with this kind of photography is you got to find something that will pretty much um, stay put. Uh, and uh, so this guy kind of hits all those check boxes. So we have this uh, downed big um, white oak tree here. And um, there's a nice area here, this nice section of it with some moss and a little knee there. Um, it kind of raises above the scene and so I'm just going to see what that might look like so that I can um, get very very close here it goes he's on the run <clears throat> um, so what do you have there then so I've got several different lenses I thought I'd play around with one that's on the camera right now is this this is Canon 16 to 35 uh, f4 um, version and I've got a 12 millimeter extension ring on it that will reduce that minimal focusing distance even more so that you can get closer to your subject. so I can get closer to my subject thus making the subject appear bigger uh, in, in the field, field of view yeah. I've also got a um, let's see well a Sigma 15 millimeter uh, 2.8 um, which is good for this kind of stuff and then a a what? The tilt shift? Uh, yeah, this is a Leawa. Um, oh, I forget what the focal length on this thing is. Yeah, Leawa 15 millimeter f4, which is uh, a good lens for this kind of stuff, but it is uh, have a, does have a manual aperture, and so, so that makes it tougher e yeah. tougher to use. And not uh, easy to use. Sure. Yeah, and for folks that don't really know what a manual aperture is, you basically there's a ring on the mm. lens that you spin. So. 
Excuse me. That's right. So instead of doing it electronically through the camera, uh, you literally change the aperture, um, just like in the old days uh, before digital. Um, but what that means is that if it's if you have a really high number or your aperture is really small, like fifteen, sixteen, then you have a hard time seeing your subject. Yeah, what it typically means is you have to open it up to frame, uh, get get your composition right, get your focus right, and then without you know moving, moving anything <laughs> and or disturbing your subject, you stop it down to where you need it for your actual photograph. So, so it's, it is very challenging. More challenging to use for sure. And it probably has a cheaper price <laughs> tag because of that. Um, yes, although I, uh, to be honest, we've had these for quite some time. I forget exactly what they cost, but, um, I mean, probably is, uh, it certainly is cheaper than the Canon 16 to 35. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing you typically need with this kind of photography, we're in a uh, forest understory here, but, um, you, you'll typically need a flash because there's just not enough light to, um, to, to expose your image and also <clears throat> you're so close you're blocking a lot of light even more light so the trick is really to combine both an ambient exposure of your background with a little pop of flash on your subject um, you know to, to really highlight the detail again that can be tough because you're so close to the subject I mean literally um, the subject might be you know with this setup might be where my finger is and so you need some way to get flash in there as much as I hate this flash I also like it because it allows you some flexibility to to do just that and so which flash is this that? is the um, Kwong Ren or flash. Venus optics um, that's what <laughs> you call it yeah uh, uh, flash that has uh, two different flashes that are on these flexible arms and the reason I say I hate it is because they just break really easily <clears throat> although not as easily as they initially did because the bug shots when those first came out that first generation <clears throat> I would say we lose on regular two to three of those every bug shot somebody two or three people would lose them and now it doesn't happen that often uh, yeah although I didn't we have, just lost one so it yeah. feels a little bit more personal now <laughs> I didn't have the original uh, version I guess first version but anyway um, so, um, <coughs> so the general concept is that you want to stop down your lens, and this is where the discussion back with that Laowa lens comes into play. You want to really stop down your lens so that you can get as much of the um, uh, environment as possible in your image. And when you stop down your lens, you mean like f16? Uh, higher. I mean, basically, with these wide-angle lenses, they typically don't stop down you know much more than f22 or so but uh, stop them down stop it down as much as you basically can uh, the lens is very forgiving in terms of the softness um, which is the trade-off of, of uh, you know stopping down and getting greater depth of field these wide-angle lenses are forgiving in that way so basically you want to stop it down pretty much all the way um, and get a good ambient exposure of the background and then you'll just pop in a little bit of flash to uh, highlight your your subject. subject. So we've decided <laughs> to use this down log on our property here. This guy's been here. It was here when we bought the place, and it's definitely degrading. We're not going to have it that much longer. But what's cool about it is, and about Alabama, is that lots of like moss so we thought um, a nice contrast might be this green color with like a leading line of the rotting log there yeah and what I'm going to try to do is kind of get up underneath the subject because I think that's what will make it look really interesting so <clears throat> having this knee or you know yeah on on, uh, on this log I'm hoping that the beetle will just sit here and I'm hoping that to my that this will look as good in reality as it does in my eye and that everything will come together. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, dude. It's quite handsome. I'm going to just try to handhold, but resting my camera and my body on this to see if... Uh, You're coming from this angle? I'm going to try to come... Let's see what it looks like here first. And again, here... <clears throat> You really have two different exposures. You have uh, the ambient exposure, which you've got to get right. So I'm, I'm making my shutter speed longer in order to get that. I'm also simultaneously adjusting the flash to, to, to light up the insect um, the stag beetle better. And... Uh, to make my ambient exposure a bit longer. You can also, of course, <coughs> uh, up your ISO in order to to uh, not have to have it quite as long of a, a uh, shutter speed. Shutter so when you speed. say you're making your exposure, you're adjusting your exposure, you're adjusting the shutter speed. And my ISO. So we're starting to, to get now a, a. Can you bring it closer? So we're starting to now get a, a better cool. uh, exposure, <laughs> both of the background and lighting up the the beetle. So just like with other forms of macro photography, best base certainly with a shiny beetle like this, diffusion's important. Someday we'll make our diffusion video. <laughs> Okay, so that was an example of some of the techniques that we use for close-up wide-angle photography. Subject and um, your scene are some very important uh, criteria for having a good image, for creating a good image. Anything else to wind it up? Patience. Yeah. Uh, for me, at least, this type of photography definitely requires um, even an additional level of, of patience, um, which sometimes I struggle with. Um, but that, um, on, on the good days when I have it and everything comes together, it's certainly a worthwhile, uh, type of photography. Yeah. So, um, so if you like this video, if you could like it and subscribe, that really encourages us to make more videos like this. Thanks. Bye. Bye.